Hello, I'm Matt Galloway, and this is The Current Podcast. How do you keep safe from the summer sun? Do you slather on the sunscreen when you go outside? For decades, it's been considered the best way to protect yourself from the sun's rays. Although lately, you may get a different impression on social media. They put these products in there. Like, there's sunscreen. Everybody knows sunscreens cause cancer. Like, yeah. I feel like that's like a pretty but basic... we still like, use it. Here's why I don't wear sunscreen. Number one, I don't want to put things on my body that... I wouldn't eat that I can't pronounce. We're actually mm -hmm. increasing the odds of getting cancer by wearing sunscreen because we're putting that light, that, that the sun's um, energy off balance by removing one of the UVs, right? Yes. Number two, vitamin D is manufactured in the body from exposure to the sun and sunscreen blocks that process not only you're wearing it like the sun is cooking that into your body yep like that's wild to me the medical community is busy dispelling misinformation about sunscreen that's making the rounds on tiktok and other platforms dr sunil kalia is an associate professor of dermatology at the university of british columbia and the national chair of the canadian dermatology association sun awareness working group he's in vancouver good morning dr kalia Good morning. Thank you for having me here today. Thanks for being here. What worries you most about this social media trend that claims that sunscreens actually cause cancer as opposed to help prevent it? These claims are quite concerning. Um, we just step it back of why we advocate for the importance of sun protection. And we know that getting excessive amounts of sun rays can be definitely harmful. And the reason why that is, is because short term, if you get too much sun rays, that causes sunburns in individuals of darker skin color. It is the darkening of blemishes that are quite concerning that can get quite disfiguring in these individuals. And then long term, the big risk of getting too much excessive sun exposure is skin cancer. And skin cancer is very common in Canada. One in every five individuals will get skin cancer. And then even in my clinic, a lot of people uh, will complain about aging of the skin with too much sun exposure. So there's definitely hazards of getting too much sun exposure. And the reason why these type of claims are quite concerning is because they're not really based on that much science. And so it's important to get that information that's correct to the general public mm -hmm. about why we need to protect our skin from too much sun exposure. As opposed to the knowledge that there is a tie between sun exposure and, and cancer rates, that is scientifically proven, correct? It's, it's very scientifically proven. In fact, uh, about 90% of all skin cancers can be attributed to too much sun exposure or UV rays. So yeah, there's no doubt that that's based on science that getting too much sun exposure can be dangerous. Are there age groups or populations that are more vulnerable than others? The thing with the sun rays and something that we did with the Canadian Dermatology Association is that we have different groups of skin cancers. One is melanoma that tends to cause the most deaths in terms of skin cancers. And in melanoma, it is actually the childhood sun exposure that people get or during their youth years and adolescence as well that you get all these sun rays during that age, but then the skin cancer actually presents later on in life during your adulthood years or even um, when you're older in adults. And so the, really the importance is getting that messaging to younger individuals when they're not thinking about cancer that we need to protect ourselves from excessive sun exposures and sunburns. I was surprised to learn that the majority of Canadians don't use sunscreen. Can you talk about what the numbers are like? You said one in five, but are they on the rise of people who are getting skin cancer? The rates of skin cancers are uh, on the rise and the rates might be increasing just to the fact that we do have an older age population. And so this is what is concerning is that we do know that what causes skin cancer and the skin cancer rates are on the rise. Mm -hmm. How treatable is skin cancer? So majority of skin cancers, if they're detected early, and that's something that we try doing in the medical community, is advocating for individuals to be aware of what to look for for skin cancer. And the good thing is with this, the majority of skin cancers we do detect early and can be surgically excised, cut out, and so they are curable when they're detected early. But there are forms that can be quite deadly. Yeah, that's the thing with skin cancer being so common as one in every five individuals will get it. The fact that it's such a common cancer, there definitely are types of skin cancers that can spread to other parts of the body and can be deadly. Given everything you've, you've just said, why do you think this anti-sunscreen movement is growing? 
every periodical time in um, with sunscreens and sun protection, we do get some challenges, and uh, that is part of science. Things that are being questioned, and sometimes it's going to be due to misinformation. And so sometimes um, the fact that skin cancer rates are increasing, people might ask, "Okay, we have been using sunscreens, and so、mm-hmm. is there something that we're not doing correct?" And I think there are other factors of why skin cancers are on the rise. And so we just look at the facts of what maybe have made people think about the concerns of sunscreens. And it really comes down to, I think, in this movement, it's been the fact that there has been reports of people getting allergic reactions、mm. to sunscreens in the past. And so then the problem is there might be a small amount of truth that a minority of percent of people can get allergic reactions. That's one to two percent, and those are not serious reactions in the sense that、um, you know we know cancer can kill people, and that that is definitely serious. And that's one in five individuals、uh, that will get cancer. And so we have to look at the pros and cons of、uh, the use of sunscreen and sun protection. And there's no doubt that with skin cancer being mostly attributed to too much sun rays, that that is what's concerning,、mm. and that's why we need to remind ourselves of the importance of sun protection. So I'd like to go through some of these examples of things we've heard on social media, some of these claims, and you know, have you either agree or debunk them?、Um, so let's start with this. We're in the sun, like cooking with chemicals like oxybenzene, polymers of petroleum, parabens, and PABA. So then, our skin's cellular respiration process is inhibited from inhaling oxygen and exhaling toxins. And then, as we soak up the sun, these chemicals are baking into our bodies. And then, the main ingredient that makes sunblock or sunscreen work is it's called oxybenzene, and that is a powerful free radical generator that is classified as non-carcinogenic until it is exposed to sunlight. Oh my God. <laughs> like, yeah, so crazy. We live in an insane so world.、Oh、so these claims about sunscreen ingredients often comes up. Is it true, Dr. Kalia, that oxybenzone can cause cancer? Yeah, so oxybenzone is one of the type of、uh, filters that we have available in sunscreens, and it's one of our organic filters. It is an effective、uh, blocker or absorber of U- high energy UV photons, and so this is why it's probably getting the most challenge. It is、uh, very effective and very common to be used in sunscreens in the past. The、um, short answer is no; it, it does not cause cancer. You know, these are filters that are Health Canada approved, and they're safe and effective. And so this information, this theoretical concept that Uh, was being suggested about it being promoting free radical formation. In fact, we know it's the opposite, right? Because sun rays itself is actually what、uh, causes、uh, generation of free re- radicals and、uh, also DNA mutations, and that's what links us to developing、uh, skin cancer if you get too much sun rays. So essentially, it's the opposite where the oxide benzone filters are blocking out these harmful UV filters. So that's the very element that actually keeps keeps us safe when we're exposed、yeah. to sun. Yeah, exactly. And for those individuals that are concerned, we have to remind. Ourselves, okay, fine. If you don't want to use the oxybenzone filters, the good thing with sunscreens is that we do have other options of、mm. filters that people can use. What about the more general claims that sunscreen is quote skin poison? That that many chemicals in sunscreens are toxic or absorbed through the skin. See, this is this is one of those misinformations, and definitely is a myth.、Uh, I think the word chemicals sometimes people find that that sounds harmful in itself, but we have to remind ourselves that chemicals are around us all the time. We、uh, breathe oxygen and、uh, we drink water, right? So we we do need chemicals. In fact, in these ones right here,、um, sunscreen,、uh, the filters that are available, and these are all chemicals. We have to look at the pros and cons of when we are applying these. And essentially, what the sunscreens are doing, they're they're being applied on top of our skin and acting as a filter to block those harmful UV rays. And that's essentially what we're trying to do here: is block those harmful effects of UV that we talked about, and reason why UV can be hazardous, especially with cancer. And so that that's the way it, it is actually working. Now there are so many different kinds of sunblock. I wonder if there are any chemicals that you think、uh, in sunscreens that you would recommend us avoiding. I, I think once again we look back at that these are the filters that are available in Canada are Health Canada approved, right, and also FDA approved as well. So then these have gone through rigorous、uh, safety and effective、uh, testing. And so the way I look at filters, they they can be divided into organic and mineral filters. These all are being safe and effective. And if somebody just is wary about a type of filter that they're concerned about, the good thing is that we have many different options, and so they can find one that is right for them. Here's another claim by an influencer who says not to wear sunscreen. You still don't want to get burnt by the sun. 
So slow exposure to the sun allows you to build the melanin and protect the skin the natural way. Is that true that we can build up protection to the sun naturally? You know, with all these uh, claims, there might be a small bit of truth in the fact that as we do get sun exposure, our skin does probably increase in melanin. But the problem is that, uh, especially in individuals at risk of developing skin cancer, in that process, when you're trying to get that uh, increased melanin, you are harming your skin, you are causing DNA mutations and those generation of reactive oxygen species. And so therefore, you are putting yourself at a risk of developing skin cancer by getting Uh, too much of those sun rays. So here's one more message that I'm hoping that you can talk to us about. People lather themselves up and then they go in the water. Like they literally look like dump, 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 slap, slather. Go in the ocean. Immediately in the water. Like in Hawaii, they literally are banning sunscreens because it's affecting the fish's reproduction. It's destroying the coral reefs. And we're coating ourselves in this stuff. What is it doing to us? What scientific evidence is there about sunscreen harming fish or bleaching coral reefs? So with that uh, story with the coral reefs, we fully don't know. We know that on the global level that coral reefs are vanishing in some areas, and this can be attributed mostly to climate change. Um, In terms of laboratory data, when some of these sunscreen filters are used at very, very high dosages, they have been shown to perhaps cause damage to coral reefs. But then it comes down to what we call toxicological assessments that can be done, and that's the gold standard assessment to see if this is actually causing damage to the environment. And these are still being done currently, but uh, when these are being done, it shows that the filters in the waters that are close to coral reef damage, the concentration of the filters are about 1,000 times less than the concentration that would need to be causing damage to the coral reefs. So currently with the current evidence, it's actually thought that the sunscreen filters on their own are not probably the primary source of causing coral reef uh, damage. But for those people that are concerned about that, then this goes back to the fact that we do have sunscreen filters, such as our mineral filters, that have shown not to cause coral reef damage at all, even even in laboratory data. So let's talk about best practices then. What should we be looking for in a sunscreen? I just want to step in one step back in terms of like we do, we're doing a lot of focus on sunscreens, of course, because we want to debunk these myths. But then in terms of sun protection, it goes down to avoiding sun exposure during peak hours. And that can be from 10 to 2 or 11 to 3. And then what we do is we try seeking shade and wearing, um, and wearing protective clothing as well. And then it comes down to wearing sunscreen. So the, the important part is you have to remind yourself, just because you're applying sunscreen, you don't want to be getting more sun exposure. So it's important still to do the above steps before you go down to using that sunscreen. But then when you're choosing that sunscreen, it's important to choose a sunscreen with an adequate SPF level, so at least a 30 we recommend, and something that's broad spectrum. So with both UVB and UVA protection, so it's labeled with broad spectrum on that sunscreen bottle. And would you have different advice on what sunscreen to use based on the tone and color of your skin? In in some individuals, especially in darker skin individuals, they may want to go with tinted sunscreens. And so these have more of, rather than having a white color to them, they can have more of a color to the sunscreen. And so therefore, they're more cosmetically appealing. So we do have those options for people that don't like looking very white or pale when they apply their sunscreens. Obviously, you and others have shown concern about these erroneous messages, misinformation about sunscreen. And yet, as we said earlier, the majority of Canadians do not use sunscreen. Uh, Whose job is it, do you think, not only to correct the misinformation out there, but to encourage Canadians to do this uh, to protect themselves? It is really a collaborative effort uh, and something that in the Canadian Dermatology Association, we try advocating this and through either public messaging or through tailored messaging. Um, different societies such as Canadian Society, Canadian Cancer Society has also advocated for this. Um, even at uh, child care centres and public schools, um, there are reminders that are sent about the importance of protecting one's uh, skin from sun exposure and the application of sunscreen. So it is a multiple collaborative effort in terms of trying to reduce sun exposure uh, to prevent those hazards of excessive sun exposure. So final bit of advice, you have a patient in your office and asked about advice on this, what's the bottom line? Yeah, the bottom line is that we know that skin cancer is very common. There's no doubt that there is risks of getting uh, too much sun exposure. And so when the sun exposure rays are quite strong to protect yourselves from the uh, excessive sun exposure, not getting sunburnt. 
get into the shade. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Thank you, Dr. Kalia, for your help. Thank you very much. Dr. Sunil Kalia is an associate professor of dermatology at the University of British Columbia and the national chair of the Canadian Dermatology Association Sun Awareness Working Group.